Hey guys and welcome to this video tutorial on how to enable Windows 10 Client Hyper-V and set up and create virtual machines. Now before we actually do this we need to make sure that in the BIOS virtualization technology is enabled or in modern cases VTX for Intel processors and AMD V for AMD processors. Okay, so from here on it's actually really simple. You go to the start menu here and you type in Windows Features, like that. You'll then see Turn Windows Features On or Off, you click on that. Brings up a little box of features that can be enabled or disabled in Windows 10, a bit like 7 and 8 and 8.1 as well. If you go ahead and expand the Hyper-V role here, you'll actually see that there are actually multiple options you can choose. If you tick the top one, it will select them all in the tree there, and that's what you need. You need the management tools and the platform to run Hyper-V on your machine. Click OK on that. It'll apply the changes, ask you to restart your machine, and uh, obviously once you reboot, we can go from there. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so what is the next step? Well, now we've rebooted, we can go ahead and click on the Start menu here, and if we type in Hyper-V, as shown there, you'll see that Hyper-V Manager is now enabled and installed. If you click on that, it'll open the Management Console. Now from here, what I tend to do is just right click on the icon on the taskbar and just pin it to the taskbar so it always stays there, so when you close it, it's always there, easily accessible, you can get back to it in a hurry. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is obviously get hold of Windows 10 Media, Windows 7 Media, Windows 8 Media, depending on what you want to run in a virtual machine. So if you'd like to download a copy of Windows 10 free of charge, you can do that from the website. You just go to your browser, type in there Windows 10 Media Creation Tool, as you shown here. Go to the ISO page. If you scroll down a slight tad, Uh, if you scroll down, download the tool now, it'll download the tool, you can click on that. The tool will start, you accept the terms, create an installation media for another PC, use the recommended settings, download an ISO file, Tell it where to save to, so my desktop in this case, and call it Windows, and it will be 1156 I believe, and allow it to download. When it's finished, obviously we can use that file to create a virtual machine. Okay, and um, we're almost there. It then gives you and exports the ISO to your desktop. Right, so now we're finished, let's go ahead and close this down. You'll obviously see the ISOs on your desktop. We can then use that to set up a virtual machine for Windows 10. I also have Windows 7 and 8 as well. Let's go ahead and create a virtual switch first of all. So bring up your management console for Hyper-V. Right click on your tree or your computer name here. You want to go to Virtual Switch Manager. Now you'll see in here there's external, internal and private. If you want your machine to get out to the internet, obviously you need an external DHCP address from your router or DHCP server. So obviously create a switch. Give it a name, so in my case I'm going to call it external, so I know what's going on with it. What it is, it's going to use my gigabit network connection, click OK, it'll interrupt your connection for a second, click yes on that. OK, so let's right click on JB Corsair again, or your computer name here, new virtual machine. Let's go next on that, give it a name, so in this case Windows 10. Uh, next on that, because of it being a... Uh, because it supports Generation 2, obviously you can use that if you wish, but I'm not really first, just use Generation 1 for now. Give it some memory, so in this case I'm going to give it 3, three gig of RAM, something like that. Select your switch that you created, so you can get up to the internet. Give it a storage amount, I'm going to give it 40 gig for now. Next, install an operating system from an image file that we've just downloaded. Pick the one you just downloaded, which is this one here. Open that, click next, finish. Okay, so it will create a virtual machine for you. First thing you need to do then, right click on this and go to settings. You want to go to your processor and give it as many cores as you can really, if you want it to be fast and fluid and, and responsive. And obviously it can use dynamic memory, so it will use your SSD space if it needs to. Click connect to that. And they're going to minimize down the console. 
I'm going to start it up. As you can see, it boots into the boot WIM in the ISO. Click Next to install Windows 10. Select your language, etc. I don't have a product key right now for it. You can just skip past that. Windows 10 Pro. Accept the terms and agreements. You want to do a custom install on that 40 gig or whatever partition you gave it in hard drive space. Create a new partition on that for Windows to be installed onto. Next. And now it's a waiting game. So from here we're waiting for the operating system to extract from the ISO and install onto the physical hard drive. So it's a waiting game from here. Okay, so now the installation has completed, you'll see here that it's asking you to set up your computer. I always just get it to use the express settings, just for virtualization. You own your computer, next. I always create local accounts as well, so skip this step. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's set that as the temporary password for this. Creating a local user account on this machine now. The local administrator. Hi there! Now you just go through the usual setup process. We're very happy you're here. And if you look at your SSD or hard drive right now, you'll see it working away. So there's my SSD, 100% usage. It's the SSD 850 Pro, 512 gig. That's working hard now to get me logged in and created with a new user account. You can see the CPU usage is not all that high really. So you could quite easily run three of these at once, which we will do in a minute. We'll run one Windows 7, one Windows 8, and obviously this one that's Windows 10. You can see the memory there, 16 gig is available, but it's using four. So using a quarter of the memory physically in this machine getting everything ready for you we love you we want you forever oh, hey let's do it then okay guys and there we go so we're now into windows 10 i'm just going to go straight away and change the system resolution so it fits within my screen resolution display settings advanced display settings can reduce this down to eight by six i know it's a bit of a pain but at least it fits on the screen then for you guys so then as you can see there is windows 10 windows 10 is running virtually within my desktop so there's mine there's the virtual machine so this is ideal for testing purposes to so say like you were in a business or say that you wanted to upgrade to windows 10 but you're on windows 7 and you don't know whether you really want to go to windows 10 yet you could actually just test it you could put it in a virtualized machine you could put it into a virtual machine like this. You could then install the software that you're kind of worried about or the environment that you're worried about. And then just go ahead and test and play about with it and see what you think to it. It's actually a very good operating system. I've said this previously. Um, a lot of businesses go into it now. A lot of the businesses I support are going to it now. Um, and there's no real issues with it. It's like if you're running a decent set of hardware, you know, with an SSD, you shouldn't have any issues at all. Anyway, that's enough about that. Let's go back and look at Windows 7 and 8 as well. So we'll leave this running. We'll minimize it down. Now we'll go ahead and go back to uh, Hyper-V Manager. We'll go to New Virtual Machine. We'll set up another one for Windows 8.1 because that was the Service Pack 1 they released for it. We'll give it 3,076, so 3, 3 gig of RAM. Da -da -da -da. External network adapter, so it gets an IP address for the internet access. We'll give it 40 gig of storage again. We'll obviously pick the image file we want to use, which is 8.1, 64-bit, and next on that, and finish. Again, we'll give it the full 8-core processor. I've actually spelt Windows incorrectly there, but never mind. Settings, virtual processor, we'll give it 8, because it's an 8-core overclock processor in this machine. We'll then start this up, so connect, start. And then from here on in, I will fast forward this process so it's a bit easier for you guys.
So as you can see there, Windows 7 on the left hand side is actually up and running as well. So Windows 7 is installed, that's ready to go. Obviously we can then test that and use it as we normally would. So, so far we've got Windows 7 and 10 running on this machine virtually. So there we have it guys. As you can now see we have Windows 7 on the left hand side. We have Windows 8 on the right and we have Windows 10 all running at the same time on this machine virtually. The internet works on all of them as you can see. There we have it. And it really is as simple as that. It's as easy as that to get set up and obviously play around with virtualization. If we look at the task manager we're using 50% of the CPU. This is a 4.8 gigahertz i7 it's overclocked from 3.5 turbo boost, 16 gig of RAM, obviously with the SSD as well. But as you can see, I mean, there's all three running, well, four operating systems in total, three virtually, and then the physical host. And actually, it runs really well. So it's great for testing. You can see why, you know, a lot of um, Hyper-V clusters are being in server infrastructure. It seems to be the way forward. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. It does mean a lot to me. Thank you for taking an interest in this video. As always, just please like and subscribe, share the videos around if you've enjoyed them. You know, as always, I will see you next time. I'm Jake Billing. See you later. Bye.